So we're going to move to a fellow dentist like me, Dr. Arash. I would like to set this up that it's very hard for me to have him on the show. He is a 49ers football fan, and uh, they are part of the Eagles last few games of not playing well, Ross. So I give you credit. Enjoy it. Soak it up because I'm, I just want to remind you uh, the last time the 49ers won a uh, Super Bowl, Facebook wasn't invented. So maybe, you know, you're ex excited for this year. Tell us before you get to your dental stuff, any 49ers comments? Um. No, I think I'm pretty excited about this year. I I really debated whether or not I was going to wear a 49ers jersey <laughs> when I was doing this or not, but I thought I would I I wouldn't be as petty as I <laughs> I like it. I, you know what's hard about the 49ers? Brock Purdy's such a good guy, it's hard to root against him. Uh, you know, some of the other characters on that team, you know, they're 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 more polarizing, but he's just uh such a class act that you know I, I find it hard to to have an issue with him. So I, I hope we, we see each other in the NFC championship. So tell us, Arash, you know, you own how many practices? So we currently have five practices. We're building two more and we're looking at acquiring maybe two more. So you are in growth mode and you're doing awesome things. Before we get to the Arash now, there's something I just thought of that I would love for you to share because you've role modeled this. Tell us about why you moved for a job as a dentist. Why did you tell us where you were, one of the most popular states on earth? And I'm always inspiring people to make the best decisions for them like treatment plans. But you've role modeled what you ask your associates to do. Tell us about your early start to dentistry. So my early start to dentistry is, I actually grew up in Southern California in Orange County. My mother's a dentist. So that was what I went into dental school. Like, oh, I'm going to live in Orange County. I'm going to live in Newport Beach and it's going to be great. And then I graduated and then the reality of everything set in and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So I just started looking for other opportunities and I just happened to run across one in a town named Licking, Missouri. And I thought there's no way I'm going to move there. And then I talked to the manager and she's like, yeah, we have a doctor that's leaving. And I was like, well, how much are they getting paid? They're like, well, he gets paid 25% of what he brings in. And I'm like, 25%? Like, how much could that possibly be? And then she's like, well, last year he he collected $1.3 million. And this is back in 2005, yeah. right? So I'm like, wait, so that doctor made $300,000? They're like, yeah, yeah, something like that. I was like, sign because at that time in California, doctors out of den dentists out of school were making three hundred and fifty dollars a day. Yeah, I remember those if, days. if you had a if you had a guarantee, right? So I I jumped on it, and you know I moved out there and worked for a couple of years, and then thought, you know, maybe I'll go back to California and practice what I learned and. It didn't work out very well. We hit you the got, financial you got, crisis. You got stuckified there. So um, I think it's really cool that I'm a big fan as a leader of not asking people to, to do things that I'm not willing to do myself. And your story, I actually, I likely wouldn't have done what you've done. I'm from New Jersey. I went back to practice with my dad. I'm in Philadelphia. But you're literally asking your associate dentist to test out what you tested out. And I think that's really an awesome share for our community because while it might not be right for some people to move, you now own these practices. Tell us how, whether it's through Dentist Job Connect or other channels, how you encourage, you get case acceptance with associates coming down to work for your group. Well, I will tell you, Dentist Job Connect for us has been a total game changer. Um, I've owned we I've owned Access Dental Services for, God, what are we going on? 13 years now, right? And within the last three years, I have probably had more applicants through Dennis Job Connect than I had awesome. in the totality <laughs> of the 10 years before. Like, I'm not joking. I mean, I think the last nine doctors that we've gotten, that we've uh, onboarded or in, on the process of onboarding have all been through uh, the Notches community and Dennis Job Connect. So it's been great. I it's appreciate really it. I, I also want to compliment you and your personality type. You know, you can't force a patient into doing a treatment plan they don't want to do, even if you think it's good for them, right? It has to be both you and the patient have to agree. So walk us through 
you know, someone says, I don't know about Missouri. Do they come down there? Do you show them around the office? You know, I obviously I'm proud of everyone that I've gotten to your practice, but Dr. Brandon Lave is one of my favorite people on earth. So, you know, um, he moved from New Jersey, working with you in Missouri. If a practice owner is saying, I'm in a hard to fill area, I got a good practice like Arash, give them some tips on the interview process or the getting them to be open to moving process. So, you know, it, it, it's about setting an expectation and fostering a culture, right? So first time doctors contact me, hey, I'm interested. First thing I do, I'm like, you know what? Here is a two-page summary of my company. Awesome. Here is what we do. Here is the contract <laughs> ahead of time, right? So if you have any questions, go ahead and look at it. And then after they do, I schedule a little phone call with them and we talk. We see if we mesh personality-wise and, uh, you know, culturally and philosophically, you know. And at that point, I tell them, you know what, come out. I come out and take a look, you know, because a lot of times we'll have questions. How is this possible? How is this not possible? Yeah. Because our doctors do very well. I mean, and that's I'm like, you know it's what? important for you. Your dentist, most of your associate dentists are earning between three to $500,000 a year. Is that a, is that a, an accurate? Yeah, I would, I would say the average is probably in the 400s. Yeah. The 400. And you, you offer them a, no matter what, Hey, you're going to make a thousand dollars a day to just insulate them from, am I going to move to Missouri? And not make any money is that amazing? oh yeah no that yeah. and that's guaranteed throughout the entire length of their contract like we never we don't have okay it's first 30 days or first 90 days it's it goes on you know and you know and for some of these doctors it's actually a little higher than a thousand dollars a day now yeah. but so they, i mean it, so it, it, it varies i it, cut it, you off so then they want to come they're not so sure is this when you schedule a visit for them to come down or what happens yeah, there yeah i tell them to come down and take a look and you know They'll tell me what days, and a lot of times, if, if there's a particular office they're wanting to see, I'll even tell them, you know what, don't tell me when you want to stop by. Just stop by the office. That's great. You know, and because I, I'm not into putting on airs and like, yeah. oh, let's have like a banner out there for the doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I want them to actually see what it's like on a regular day. And because I'm confident in our systems, I'm confident in the people that we have. So, you know, they come, if they like it, we talk some more, we work on the numbers, and then we start, you know, moving forward. If they like it, they sign the contract and we set a start date and we go from there. I, I love that style. And, you know, just take a few more minutes of your time. I did a video last night of, should we be proud of our patient-centered production? I get feedback sometimes, Arash, from the Yelly members of my dental anatomy. Paul, you talk too much about money and all young dentists should care about it's just doing right by the patient. But you know what? Guess what? Like doing right by the patient, if you're doing class one fillings all day, is not going to allow you to pay your loans. It's not going to allow you to feel fulfilled. So you're helping these dentists with patient-centered production. So if there was a curious dentist saying, Arash, how can these new dentists make $300,000 a year? Walk us through their patient-centered production. What type of procedures are they doing? What training do they need to come with? What training do you add to them? Tell us about that. So really, you know, when, when we're do doing the initial discussions, I straight, I will, I'm very open. I told them, look, we're access dental dentures and implants, right? We do lots of dentures. We do lots of extractions. We do general dentistry for everybody too, but we also do implants. If you have, even if you're a new graduate, if you feel comfortable extracting teeth, you'll do fine. Yeah. Right. In in Missouri, we're fortunate. We have expanded function dental assistants that can do a lot of the restorative work. So as long as you can drill properly and extract teeth, for the most part, they'll, they can get everything else done. But I do tell them, you know, if you're if you I've had people call and like, well, I didn't have a great experience in dental school with extractions. I'm like, well, then we're probably not the place for you. Yeah. But, you know, if you if we have an office that has availability for a second associate, right? And you want to try it out, come on in. We'll train you. We'll send yeah. you to CE classes. We'll do whatever it is we need to do to help build you up. You know, one of one of our core values is actually lifelong learning. And we believe that philosophically from, the, from our assistants all the way up to our doctors. I actually love that. I mean, that's why 
Also, what's cool, different than our generation, they have all these great hands-on CE courses. Some of our sponsors, the Carl Croner Institute, even if you didn't get a good experience with extraction, you, extractions, you literally, for what I believe is very reasonable amounts of money, can go and learn this in a supportive way and then bring that training to you. And I'm sure when you have their back, you can help them like in game with it. We've sent we've sent doctors to his courses yeah. actually. So yeah. I didn't I didn't, I actually didn't rem know remember that he was a sponsor that that he was in the nachos thing. But I I've, I've heard a lot of good things about him, and we've, yeah. we've sent doctors there. So that's that's he's great. a kindred spirit. I just tell a quick story about him because I admire him so much, and I've so you know I you know I'm into live streaming stuff and on demand things. 2004, I was with my dad at the Greater New York Dental Meeting. Okay. And he was live streaming an extraction from his office in Utah to us in New York. And I mean, wow. that was just brilliant, right? Nobody was doing that. He was saying, hey, I'm not just going to show you a presentation on how to take out a tooth. I'm going to show you live from Utah. So he's awesome. Now, my last part here, Rosh, uh, be careful how you answer some of these questions. But uh, could you tell us about your experience when you came to Philadelphia for the Dental Nacho C event? Oh, I loved it. You loved it. Was I mean, the food, was, I food was great. Food was fantastic. So everything in Philly, actually, I love Philly. Okay. Like I'm not, I'm not, I give people a hard time on the football, but the nachos event was amazing. The food was great. The location is right next to Rittenhour Park. Yeah, and you did, you did something, morning. you did something that I encourage more people to do. And I'm going to kindly annoy people who are not doing this. Like you brought two of your associates with you or one of your associates with you. Mm -hmm. What was the value as a practice owner to go to an event with one of your associates Besides the bonding you do, besides the fun, but how does that maybe help showcase your organization to younger dentists when you have one of your associates there? You know, I didn't really take it. I didn't look at it from that perspective, Paul. I, I brought my associate over because I wanted him to come and see what I do, yeah. right? To see like, this is, this is, you know, he's interested in buying in and he wants to get ownership. So I'm like, yeah, this is what it's, in, this is what it takes. Right. This is my team, this management team. Come learn. You know, I think it'd be great. But on the flip side, it was great because other associates got to talk to him. I think you got to talk to him and actually, yeah. you know, get to know him. I did. Well. He's great. I mean, he's amazing. And also it's positive unintended consequences because we're weird old medium age people. So even if we say come work at our office, when we have one of our associates there, they just tell the story just like a before and after of an implant case. So even though yeah. someone may intellectually believe us that we have a great practice, which we do, it's magical when you have an example of somebody walking around, having food, talking. So more people. Yeah, say, it's, so it's like you don't have to believe me. Ask any of my associates. You and know, then like I, what? Yeah. yeah. When, when, when we have doctors that are like, oh, can I talk to somebody? I'm like, who do you want to talk to? I don't care. Here's the list of all their phone numbers. They're all fine with anybody. Call. Even doctors that we have that were leaving. I'll be like, yeah. Give him a call, like, but, but he's leaving. I'm like, that's what he's not. He's not leaving on bad terms. And I think that's that just shows you're genuine, right? Because it's got to be the right fit for them. And talk to people about why they move on. They might move on to buy a practice. They might move on because their family moves. Well, you've shared so much here, Rosh. People can text Front Springfield at two one five seven nine eight nine eight nine seven to learn and more and apply for your job. And I just want to share, it's no problem if you don't come to the April event. It's no big deal. I will just give the next Brandon Labe to the Eagles team dentist, okay? So if you're not there, <laughs> no problem. Don't need to come. Don't have to be there. But Brandon Labe number two is going to Barb and the Eagles team dentist out of Philly camaraderie. So maybe maybe you should come and, you know, fight fight for Missouri. But if you don't feel like coming, you know, the next Brandon Labe, I'll just give to somebody else. I, Am I, I good I, at I this get... job? What? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you're, you're very convincing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ross. You're awesome. Go back Take, to what you're doing. Thanks for doing all care, the Paul. things you do. Talk to you mm -hmm. later. But...